How's it going guys? It is 1.43 a.m. 10th of June here in Japan. We have a past level question for pharmacology, step one, internal medicine, 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, MHL man underscore medical links down below for any telegram. Links to the telegram group and channel down below. And I start the clip. 50 year old man with cystic fibrosis, double lung, lung transplant a year ago. Uh, he's on an immunosuppressant that decreases intracellular calcineurin. Vitals are temperature 98.6 Fahrenheit, heart rate 72, respiratory rate 14, blood pressure 170 over 100. Physical exam shows coarse hair on his hands and forearms. Question wants to know which of the following agents most likely are responsible for his condition. Let's just hop to the answer choice here. Choice A, I have six and I have wrong fucking answer. Garbage nonsense agent for US simile. It's a monoclonal antibody that targets glycoproteins 2B, 3A, and platelets, so obviously impairs platelet function. And uh, eptifibatide, tyrofibin, epsiximab, all garbage drugs that we cared about during the numerical step one year. I haven't seen you assembly give a fuck. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, adalimumab, wrong fucking answer. So anti-TNF-alpha agent, monoclonal antibody against soluble TNF-alpha. However, infliximab, exceedingly high yield, monoclonal antibody against TNF-alpha. Etanercept, recombinant TNF-alpha receptor, those two agents exceedingly high yield. So any before you commence any anti-TNF-alpha agent, you have to do a TB test because increased risk of TB of suppressed TNF-alpha. Uh, patients who have silicosis cannot receive these drugs because of increased uh, propensity to develop TB uh, infections. And also, you can be aware that anti-TNF-alpha agents, uh, they like them on USMLE for IBD, Okay, so they'll just say patient has IBD and is going to be administered a monoclonal antibody. And they'll say which of the following is the target of the monoclonal antibody. And it's just TNF alpha. Uh, for a rheumatoid arthritis, for DMARDs, you're going to do methotrexate first, hydrofolic reductase inhibitor. Then, if the patient fails methotrexate or certain contraindications, such as pulmonary fibrosis, you can add an anti TNF alpha agent. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, cyclophosphamide, wrong fucking answer. So it's guanine and 7 alkylating agent, just general hard-hitting immunosuppressant. You simply wants you to know this causes hemorrhagic cystitis, red urine, okay? It liberates a toxic metabolite called acrolein. You can give mesna, which has a thiol group, sulfur atom. It's a reducing agent that can mitigate uh, the bladder toxicity induced by cyclophosphamide. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, cyclosporin, correct answer. So it's going to bind to cyclophyllin, decreases intracellular calcineurin, decreases transcription of IL-2 responsiveness to IL-2, decreases uh, T-cell function. Okay, so IL-2 induces uh, proper T-cell functioning. And you need to know that this causes hypertension, number one. Number two, hypertrichosis, which is increased hair growth. The patient has both these here. And it can cause nephrotoxicity. Okay, so they ask all three of those across step one and step two. They really like that. And as I said, it decreased intracellular calcineurin. So let's just move to the other agents real quick. Other high yield points, I'll tell you. Cyrolimus, wrong fucking answer. So this does not decrease intracellular calcineurin. It binds to mTOR, okay? But it will also decrease responsiveness to IL-2. It can cause... Uh, hyperlipidemia, but actually what's high yield for you is just it does not cause nephrotoxicity, okay? It's an important negative because you can get a question like this and they can mention, for example, creatinine is elevated and they're pointing towards cyclosporin as an example, all right? But cyromas doesn't cause nephrotoxicity. Wrong fucking answer. Choice of tacrolin, that's wrong fucking answer. So similar to cyclosporin, it's going to decrease intracellular calcineurin, binds to FK506, so it decreases transcription responsiveness to IL-2 T-cell function. It can cause diabetes, okay? So there are some overlapping adverse effects, such as uh, tacrolimus also causes nephrotoxicity, similar to cyclosporin, but simply doesn't give a fuck. What they give a fuck about in recapitulation is cyclosporin causes, number one, hypertension, number two, hypertrichosis, number three, nephrotoxicity. Cyrolimus does not cause nephrotoxicity. Tacrolimus can cause diabetes. Okay, you need to know uh, tacrolimus causes diabetes. And in recapitulation, as far as mechanisms of action, you need to know that cyclosporin and tacrolimus both decrease intracellular calcineurin. Cyrolimus does not decrease intracellular calcineurin. All three of these latter agents decrease T-cell function. Tacrolimus, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.